Hi folks, welcome along to the podcast number six, I believe it is now. Um, so here myself, Paul, and we've got our Linz. Yeah. How are you doing, Linz? I'm doing okay. Yep. And so um, today's interviewee is Ian Young, who used to be the head of maintenance. Now he's, I think he's basically head of construction as it's all been put all into one umbrella, so to speak. And he deals with the ins and outs of the house. Um, so today, um, that's an interview about him. Um, Ian's quite a nice guy. Um, he's really nice, yeah. Yeah, always, he's always helpful when you have ideas and yeah. listens to you. Um, but I might at the end of this video, you might see a wee blooper from the interview that we had uh, when we we're recording it. So we'll see what happens, and you can see that at the very end of the video. Um, so we're going to see Ian's video uh, interview, and after the interview, uh, we'll come back to ourselves and we'll give you a wee tour of the shop uh, because it's a place that you should always come and visit. Really, a lots of uh, amazing the uh, gift ideas or just souvenirs from the shops, and we'll go through and we'll show you all of that. And hopefully, one day, um, if we convince them, we'll get an interview with some of the shop staff. I I'm trying to convince them. Yeah, we're almost there. We're trying to get them to do an interview. Yeah. We just got all, to pin them down. They're all lovely because there's um, Sheila. Um, who else is, is it? Um, yeah, we've got Fiona. Fiona. Sh uh, Sheila, Liz. And Alison. Alison, yeah. Uh, Can't forget Alison. Alison, you're my favourite. Uh, and Sheila and Liz and Fiona. But well, Alison, you're my favourite. <laughs> but anyway, we'll go to see you in the interview and uh, when we come back, we'll give you a tour of the shop. Hi, folks. Welcome along to the podcast here at Bannerburn House. Today, we've got Ian Young with us. He is the um, ex maintenance manager, now the head of construction, I believe so. Yeah, leader of the construction team. I was the operations manager for a, for a period of time, but um, we, are, we now have kind of re reorganised and I'm in charge of the construction team. So it's been quite a challenge. Right. And when did you come to visit the house? What, what, just, what happened there? How did you become involved? Back about 2017, there was an open day here at the house. Um, and I noticed it on Facebook. So, having been born in the village of Bannerburn, I thought, wow, I want to go back and see what this is like, because this house has always been an interest to me right from my youth. So I came along to an open day and um, saw what they were trying to get done with the house and I felt I had to volunteer for it because I came from a construction background. Um, and obviously they were quite keen to get people with that kind of experience involved in the house. Yeah. So I've been here since 2017, yeah. Right, and what did you think when the first time you walked through the door after when you initially seen it? Well, I thought, what a fantastic house, and obviously the ceiling and the, the staircases and the, the balusters, it just was lovely, but it was sadly neglected, and I, I felt really angry when I found out that the people who had owned this property for, you know, since the Mitchells left in the early 60s, since Miss Mitchell, Mitchell went to a care home, the house had been owned by two entrepreneurs very wealthy men and they spent not a penny on maintaining the house so the, the house was in poor condition or worse condition um, because of that because um, then they looked after it and the caretakers here had done a bit of work in it but not in a very professional manner yeah. so there was quite a lot to do and it had to be done very quickly but at that time we didn't own the house mm -hmm. we hadn't at that time managed to get the get the purchase through um, and so we weren't allowed to do anything so we had to wait right. But six months before we then purchased the property, and we were allowed then to proceed with the, the, the emergency repairs, um, particularly the, the roof in the Victorian extension, which was in very, very bad condition, being a flat roof. And the Jacobean part of the building was in much better condition because it was the, the, the slate, the tiled roof. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was a very quickly noticeable that this building was quite close to the, what we call the tipping point in construction where. If he'd been left much longer, it would have been unsavable. Yeah. Um, so we just managed to get the property in time to be able to carry out these repairs, and yeah. and we're gradually working our way through the house when so, we when we can generate an income yeah. through, through grants, etc., to do the repairs to the house. Yeah. So as a volunteer myself, and I come back and forward, uh, and I come along on a Wednesday and any other days I can get in, and I, I meet you in the house and have a chat now and again. I've seen many things they've done, many projects have completed, like the toilet block. But as Jim Palmer talked about in our previous yeah. uh, episode. Uh, also, the floor room in the, the main hall and uh, yeah. the dining room and the burnt room as well. Yeah, the, 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 room. yeah the burnt room too was the same. Yeah, and as I said, unfortunately, with the water ingress that went to the building, 
And because the gutters, which is always a bad thing if they're not cleaned out, they, they had never been cleaned for donkey's years, so the water was running down the building. And the type of building it is, it's, it's built with a random rubble um, stone, and it's, and it's got um, the type of mortar that's in it allows the water penetration. So it was coming in and soaking all the timber, so the, the joist ends were rotten, the, the floors were in a very poor condition. So for us to continue using the house, we had to very quickly try to um, repair that. So we had to replace all the conk, all the, the damaged joists, all the damaged flooring, and gradually work our way around the three worst areas in the house and replace these. And that, that now gives us up. These rooms are now safer if they're used for, for all, all the volunteers and for any events that we have, yeah. you know. I remember when the dining room was getting done, I was giving hammer nails to get hired in and help out, and it was... <laughs> It's not my my background. I'm not a good way like any DIY stuff, but I feel like it's stuck in. So, um, has there been any place in the house where you'd say the most challenging to you? Yeah, well, there's been challenges in the house when we were doing these floors. Obviously, we had to with dry rot and wet rot to deal with. We had to spray them and things like get the appropriate PPE and put all that these chemicals on to make sure this doesn't happen again, and try to get the things dried out, but also make it safe that. Nobody was going to get injured while this work was getting done. And that's always been a big challenge here has been the health and safety mm -hmm. when you're working with volunteers. But the biggest, the most difficult project that, that I've attempted since I came here was a, long, a joint effort with the gardening team when we put the new paths in to the, to the, the wall garden. Because mm -hmm. the garden had been left for years and was very badly overgrown. <coughs> and we had to set the levels, we had to set the paths, and we had to do it right through the worst one uh, onto the winter due to the fact that it was a grant and we had to spend the grant by March the following right. year. So we were doing it out of season. So it was pretty pretty bad weather-wise and underfoot. It was very muddy and um, lost my welly boots a couple of times. <laughs> um, but yeah, we all worked in. It's also, age group of the people we are, their volunteers here quite considerably are mainly retired. So it was a challenge for people who are aged to do these things, but we got it done Good and it's man. looking fantastic. Yeah. We've still got to finish of the final layer on the past, but it's going to mm -hmm. look tremendous when it's completely finished. Yep. So, apart from the house, have you got any hobbies that you do outside the house that you get fired into sometimes? Or? Babysitting. Babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I like a bit of cycling, but I've not been doing much recently. Yeah, I like to read a wee bit. But yeah, it's, and gardening, that's a bit my life and I, my, our favourite occupation at home is basically being in the garden. You, know? now you mentioned cycling. Um, at the time of this filming has gone on, well, there's actually cycling events for Glasgow, Stirling, yeah, yeah, and there's also yeah. cycling happening in Stirling at the moment. Yeah. Um, have you taken any part or well, uh, No, of really, I've just watched some of the coverage on the television. I haven't, mm. haven't taken part in it. But it's, uh, and then the off road stuff and things like that. Now, I used to attempt when I was younger, but uh, I just leisurely cycling. Mm, leisurely uh, cycling. Strenuous, you know? <laughs> so, um, is there anything that you would like to see happen to the house that, um, like, for example, a if we could give you the money just now, what would you spend it on? If the money wasn't an option, no, no limit, well, what would the main thing spend it on? There's two really important things that we need to do to the house as quickly as we can. It's firstly, add to the power supply distribution within the house. We do have a free phase new supply that we put in because there was no electricity, no mm -hmm. water, and hardly any drainage in the property when we bought it. So we've been gradually turning that around. If we could afford to put in a further distribution board, to this part of the area here, the Victorian extension, it would allow us to expand on the, the, the power that we can supply for events, for lighting, and would give us a, a much broader depth of what that we can do. Um, the other thing is the Victorian staircase at the bottom of the stair um, from the main building is really the floor there is pretty poor, as is the, um, the area around it, and that really needs to get yeah. to be addressed hopefully within the next six months or so. Mm -hmm. So that's the two biggest projects right. I think that we've got. And finally, the third things would be some of the eyebrow windows up here are allowing water into the building. Right. And one of the rooms up here, I'm pointing directly up to there, has a very ornate um, cornice around it. Right. And we need to be very, very careful that, that we don't further damage that. Right. We're using dehumidifiers and things to try to keep it dry as possible. But there is water ingress from the roof. Right. So that's the sort of three things I would say are urgent, and very urgent at the moment. Yeah. So what about um, uh, on the other scale, what's your favourite room or the favourite part of the house? Well, there's so many nice rooms in the house. Um, the Lee Hall is fantastic, as you know. 
But I've got to say, I think the library room is a beautiful room <laughs> and it gets a lot of light. Um, so probably the library and, and the way hall is a second choice. Yeah. I think when I'm talking to Lynn later on, when we're doing the after this interview, she'll agree that the library has become is one of the favourites for all the, the main volunteers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's where we find nice meetings happening sometimes yes, as well. Yeah, so. it's, a, it's a big room and there's a table and there's a seat and accommodation. Yeah. It's, a, it's a comfortable room. And as I say, it gets lots of light, so that, that helps too. It always makes the room more attractive. So one final question I need to ask is, there's been many events happening at the house. Now, I do the paranormal events, as you know. Um, there's also been weddings. There's been Tales of Tartan that was quite successful. Yeah. Uh, and there's other events like the Harvest Fair, Christmas Fair, and all these things. Is there some type of event that you would love to see at the house that's maybe never been done yet? Um, well, it's not something I've really thought about. No, I mean, it would be anything that, that gets children involved, I think, would be good. If we can get some sort of more, more events for encouraging children to come to the house because yeah. Yeah, they're the future generation. And, and if, the other, the other issue we're going to have is we're going to have some quite a lot of uh, property being built, private issues being built across the, the, the main road from where we are. And these children are going to come and probably use this area to play in. So if you get these kids involved in it, let them mm -hmm. understand what we're doing here, let them understand how important the house is, the historical and things like that, then they may then well be more interested to make sure that it doesn't get damaged in any way. Mm -hmm. So any kind of children events, I think, would be really good. Like a children's festival or uh, a children's Yeah, well, we've done things, we've yeah. had play things of it. But just, yeah, a gallery day, something like that would, yeah. would be a good thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, all we can say is watch our space might happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. Good, but Ian, good. thanks very much for coming along today. Okay. It's been a pleasure talking no to you. No problem, thank you. Again. And if we can, we'll maybe get back on again if there's an event or a project you're doing that you yes. can talk about. Yes, That'd certainly, yeah, it would be very good, yeah, well, enjoy that. Okay. But Bye. for now, um, thanks for uh, joining in and thanks for watching and we'll speak to you soon. Welcome back. So that was an interesting interview you did with Ian. Uh, it was quite a lot of information there, yeah. Yeah, and it was quite unusual because the fact is it was meant to be raining all day and we're out in the factor's uh, staircase outside the factor's room. And the sun that was just beating down and during that interview, I don't know about Ian, but I was sweltering out there. You were in the shade as well. <laughs> I was in the shade as well. Um, and uh, yeah, the, Lucy was doing the camera work for us that day uh, because Cairn, uh, he should be back next week, next day, uh, and the next podcast because he's been no well. Uh, so we miss Cairn. Yeah, so. Cairn, Cairn the cameraman. Yeah. Yep. Um, we've got another cameraman today. I'll give a big shout out to Dave Patterson, who's on the other end of the camera. He helps us on the, the ghost nights that you could all come along to. And Dave's a nice guy. He looks after us with all the equipment and uh, he's always there to lend a hand. So, what are we going to do now? Uh, we're going to have a walk through into the shop. Ooh, let me do it. Okay, do you want to follow me? So this is the shop. This is where we can normally find, uh, like we mentioned earlier, Liz, uh, Fiona, Alison and Sheila. They're normally in this domain. So we've just got, uh, this is available on um, every time that the, the house is open and the shop team are here, these are open. So you have all the lovely tartan display, which is over here. Um, so like all the different things that are, that loads of, of uh, Loads of the things that, that uh, the shop team have actually made for uh, sale. And then we pan over to the right here and we have the many of the products that have come from the, um, the actual garden with the, you've got the preserves over here and then we have the products from the bees and we've got the bees wax wraps over here and we may actually have some honey in, sh in the shop uh, in, in a few weeks time. And then we come over to the um, candles, which are beeswax candles. And then we have the cards that have been made by the shop team. I love the bee theme because bees are quite important to the house because we've got the apiary down yep. in the house, uh, the gardens. And uh, it's a good supply of honey we get from as well, isn't it? Yes, yep. So um, it's also um, a symbol of the Jacobite um, um, sort of fight. Right. Uh, they, they use the bees as a symbol normally hidden on a person's uh, clothing or something somewhere and then you could see that they were a jacobite sympathizer mm. so you can come around here and we have quite a lot of uh, 
the merchandise that are branded to Barnet Burn House. Um, you have the so you have all the the cups that have been produced for us, and we have got these new editions of the key rings, which are available as well. Which comes around to the Highland Coos, and we've got some gift bags, and we've got lots of the uh, postcards and the um, notelets that are also available in the top corner there. I like the postcards because, like, um, majority of some of the postcards, the people in the pictures are people from the house of a lot of the volunteers, and uh, I'm not in there because I wasn't good enough. I would have broke the camera, I think. The I'm prize... not in there either. <laughs> well, you'd have been great for them. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of good things. They Highland cows, uh, pin badges and key rings have cost me a fortune because I've been buying them for my wife. Uh, or Roseanne, she loves them. And just like the um, the top you're modelling today, the Bannerburn House yes. hoodie, there's the t-shirt behind us as well there. Um, that you can um, buy if you want to buy a t-shirt with the Bannerburn House logo on it. They are actually available on our website as well. So if you're watching us uh, from afar, you are always welcome to go onto our website and find uh, the shop. And many of the products that you see in the shop are actually is actually available on our website. If you go to www.bannetburnhouse.gov. There's the, the blue bonnet. That's quite unique, isn't it? What's the story behind the blue bonnet? So, um, the the blue bonnet was traditionally worn as a um, a headgear for many of the people in just like the rabbit. Yes, <laughs> in the like, picture. Yeah, just like the rabbit in the far corner over there. And you can also uh, the ladies are actually producing different um, cockades which is these things up here. This is called the Bonnie Prince Charlie Cockade. And we also have a one that's called the Clodden Cockade and some other tartans as well, as well are available. So there's a lot on offer here in the shop. Um, and there's a lot of new things coming in every so often, isn't there? So yeah. the girls, the, I'll say girls, the ladies, sorry. They, they do well with all the shop. And yourself, you help them at time to time as well, don't you? I do, yeah. Um, and we do get a lot of people coming in, uh, and I think it's sometimes even the smallest we get, like the the wee tartan bow ties here, and some of the buttons that you get, or sorry, badges, buttons is more American, isn't it? Um, all the different tartans uh, are amazing. Um, even simple things like um, the was it the key key holders? Yeah. Um, they're just wee knickknacks that are amazing. The amount of times we get some good feedback from them, it's, it's really amazing. And the homemade jam. The ladies do well with the homemade jam. And I believe that the, the beeswax polish is from... From our bees as well, yep. So the beeswax polish there, which is quite a good... Really good work. So, if you've never been to the shop, you can visit online, you said? Yep, it's uh, www.bannetburnhouse.scot and press the shop button and you can view all our products on that. And then you've got uh, the shop here itself that we're in just now. You can come here on a Wednesday between 10 and 2? It's 11 and 1. 11 and 1, sorry, I get the time wrong. Uh, usually the volunteer does the days are 10 to 2. Uh, uh, also, you can get a tea and a coffee and get a view of the house. And if you want to become a volunteer, it's ideal to come along on a Wednesday. But please check the, the website or the group page on Facebook before coming along because not every everyone is available on a Wednesday. So just now, all our, um, I'm trying to think of uh, the events that have gone up. The next event we've got is, um, I'm just trying to think, going out just now, we've got four, probably four tickets left there at the moment. Four. For, Just four tickets left for the um, Past Life Regression workshop. So if you want one of them, be quick, because it's this Sunday, the 20th of August. So by the time this goes out, hopefully Wednesday night, um, on the, the, well, she's 
tomorrow from this viewing just getting done just now. Um, you've got about three, four days before you can buy a ticket for that one. Uh, the next one is, I believe, the, the, the Tales of Tartan walk. Is that it's sold? It's the unearthing the Tales of Tartan. Is there still tickets left for that? There are, I want to say, two tickets left for that. So the time you see this, it might be less or it might be sold out. We're not 100% sure. But just at the time of recording, there is about one or two tickets left for that one. Then we move on to the Halloween weekend. Uh, we've got um, the May, the Friday night, the Friday 27th of October, which is the um, mediumship night. And it's £10 a ticket to come along and uh, get three mediums given uh, messages from beyond the grave, from loved ones, hopefully. And there are 14 tickets left for that one at the moment, um, at the time of recording, as I must say. Uh, you have the, the, the night on the Saturday, the 28th, the paranormal night, that's completely sold out. And then you've got the Victorian uh, ghost hunt on the Sunday, the 29th, which there's still tickets available for that one just now. And that one is from, I think it's 8 o'clock till 1 in the morning. Um, details of that are still to be released. Um, what we're doing, uh, what type of experiments we're going to do, but it will be on all non-scientific. There will be no torches. We'll be using candles. Well, when I say candles, we have to use the the battery operated ones because we can't have naked flames in the house unfortunately or there'll be fire alarms going off and the night will be over um but we've still got tickets left for that one um also we will be hopefully trying to do our children's halloween party on the sunday more information that'll be released on facebook when it comes about um and then after that i think it's just the christmas fair to look forward to yeah and that's not been officially released when yeah. it is going to be but we have like hoping it will happen. <laughs> yeah, so just watch this space and see what comes about. Um, recently, I must admit as well, um, if anybody wants to see uh, a ghost, ghostly type uh, recording, uh, recently my um, lone vigil uh, of the house was uh, aired on Yvette Fielding's uh, Paranormal Activity, uh, which you can get on the podcast or you can get on YouTube. Um, so if you want to see that, go along to there. Um, is there anything else that we... I think needs to be added. Oh, that we've got 11 new subscribers. 11 new subscribers. Since we yeah. started doing the podcasts. Yeah. Uh, keep it coming. Um, if you've got any ideas of the podcast you want to hear about, give us a shout. Let us know. We're happy to try and uh, do any type of interviews that you want to hear about. Um, we will, hopefully, once um, Margaret has got a lesser schedule, we're going to be uh, talking the garden with Margaret, who's the head gardener. Uh, she's a bit busy at the moment with a lot of things happening. Um, but Margaret, she'll give us a wee tour of the garden. That's going to be one to look out for. Website for everything. Um, as I say, volunteering, get any events we've got as well, you can get it on the website. Um, the shop, look, we're in just now, can't yeah. forget the shop. Yeah. Uh, so we've got all that. And as I say, there's the Facebook page as well. How's the Facebook page? Yeah, that's coming along pretty well. It's got quite a lot of uh, new viewers and audience, and like loads of interest in it, all the posts. Yeah. Um, also, there was a, I think just recently, there was a post about the wedding fair, and the wedding. Um, that happens, weddings that happen here, and how we've been up, uh, put up for different awards in the wedding yep. category, which has been quite great. Um, so there's a lot to see in Bannerburn House. As I say, we want to become a volunteer. We look forward to like seeing new people come through the door to help different trades to try and help us restore this beautiful, beautiful building. So any help you can get, more appreciated. Uh, come along, visit as well before you decide to become a volunteer. Uh, but for now, I think, um, I think. 
as I said, everything's been said about the shop, uh, everything about all of the different uh, events coming up, still with tickets left for. So all I can say is thank you very much for watching. So it's goodbye for me. And bye for me. Latterly, as a project manager, my fear was I was working with uh, amateurs. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what I've done. <laughs>